This modest house in Walnut Grove, Minnesota, is the home of a champion. A table full of national and state trophies celebrate the skill of a competitor who is becoming increasingly harder to beat. Kelsey Robinson has been shooting arrows in junior competition for less than three years and is already ranked sixth in the nation. She is 16 years old. She's very dedicated and works hard at it. So after school, go and practice football or wrestling, um, Kelsey shoots a bow. Kelsey took up archery after learning to shoot a compound bow with her father. Good shot. Good execution. Now she's rapidly becoming one of the best in the country, shooting lightweight arrows with her recurve bow. She says the training schedule is demanding. Looks good, Kelsey. But with Dad's help, it can be fun. He puts some money in the middle, and if I'm from 70 meters, I get it. Every day, Kelsey practices shooting arrows at a target up to 70 meters away. So far away that she needs a scope to see where the arrow landed. Shooting from the maximum distance of 70 meters, which is about 76 yards or about 230 feet, requires special skills. The arrow must describe an arc. Here's a bullseye view. Let's slow that down and see it again. Kelsey Robinson's goal is to make the United States archery team next year, and then she's going to shoot for the stars. 2004 is in Athens, yeah, or 2008 in Beijing. You're going to be there? So, hopefully, yep. Going to bring us back a gold medal? Yep, I'll try hard. We are sure she will. When writer and amateur sailor Marlon Breeze set out in his little boat, Persistence, on the 4th of July 1999, he had no clue that the strange and eerily calm weather was about to change. Bree and his little boat were cruising comfortably near the Canadian border just off Portage, Minnesota. A few miles due west, campers in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness were lucky to survive a record-breaking straight-line windstorm. Over three-quarters of a million acres, uncountable numbers of trees were flattened. It was the storm of the century, and it was headed straight for Marlon Bree. And all of a sudden, I heard mayday, mayday, mayday. Sailboat overturned, three people in the water. I thought, what is going on? A few minutes later, he knew. And all of a sudden, with a howl, this beast came across the mountains, hit the sailboat. Only 20 minutes from a his boat nearly capsized, and Marlon Bree was fighting for his life. All of a sudden, it went over. And I just felt for a minute like it was going over all the way. Uh, it was an awesome experience, just, just awful. I later learned that the winds had been clocked at 100 to 110 miles an hour and that I was in the main area of the blast. Marlon Bree and his boat persistence survived a freak storm that had, as its only warning, a strange colored cloud. It was known in storm because it was an eerie emerald green. And that was the inspiration for a book that Marlon Bree has written about his experience on Lake Superior that day. We survived a storm. He's 68 now older and wiser, and determined to keep on sailing. There are no real age limits to it, so we, uh, we'll just keep right on going here. From Lake Superior, this is Jason Davis reporting. A century or so ago, vast stretches of southwestern Minnesota resembled an ocean of grass and wild flowers. Bison roamed these treeless prairies by the tens of thousands. Now, the land is largely covered by corn and beans or grazed by cows. It was the largest ecosystem in North America. 
Jim Brandenburg has roamed the filming and photographing wild places and life for National Geographic. It's all grass. Now he's come home to Laverne, Minnesota to save a tiny patch of land virtually in his own backyard. And this is where I was born. This is where I learned to shoot pictures, where I learned about nature and learned to live. The latest store to open in Laverne is a gallery featuring prints and photographs by Jim Brandenburg. Less than one half of one percent of native prairie that's left. We feel it's kind of our goal and our mission in life to increase that percentage. And then you can see Laverne. It's hoped that starting with this here. recently purchased 350 acres, the Brandenburg Prairie Foundation can restore parts of this region to its former glory. I think it's therapy for us to take a piece of ground that didn't seem to have much use. And we've come full circle. Now, it's, to me, it's a prize jewel. A Brandenburg design poster has been printed by the Fish and Wildlife Service for sale throughout the country. All proceeds will go towards Prairie Ren in Minnesota and northern Iowa. And one day, instead of just looking at photographs and prints, people will be able to come here to this rocky hill and see the real thing.